If you ever wondered what started the Jacobite uprisings, why Scotland united with England, where Orangemen came from, and why Kate Middleton's not a Catholic, then you might be going to the wrong pub quizzes. But this video is for you. Hiya, I'm Bruce Fumi from Scotland History Tours. If you're interested in the people, events and places in Scottish history and you want some great ideas about places to visit in Scotland, then subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time I make a new YouTube video. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. Can you imagine living in a time where politics was so divided that the two sides could never see each other's point of view? And I'm talking about like no matter what. Can you imagine a time where propagandists would just make up news that was completely faked? I'm talking outright lie with no compunction. Part of the country thinks that the leader's secretly selling a nation out and the other half think that the first half are conspiracy theorists. Do you know what would bring the country back together again? A royal baby. Or would it? We put so much time, energy and debate into how the Jacobite rebellion ended at Culloden, yet so little into how it started. You see, if you thought about how it started, you might not call them rebellions. Personally, I never call them rebellions. The only reason I've done it for this video is because YouTube forced me to. It's true. My title has to say Jacobite Rebellion. You see, after 300 years, I can't say Jacobite Restitution of the Rightful Monarchy because nobody's searching for it. When the Queen opens Parliament, people should be lying in the streets shouting, Hey Lizzie, you're a fraud! But they don't. Now you might be looking at me and thinking, do you know what? He doesn't look like a committed primogeniture divine right of kingship hereditary monarchist. I know. But let's imagine for a minute I was. Now don't switch off yet. Stick with me till the end. You'll get something interesting. You'll also get one good joke and I hope a reason to click the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell. <coughs> okay. Let's imagine that I'm a committed hereditary monarchist. Let's imagine that it's autumn 1688. Let's imagine that you are the hereditary monarch. Your name is James Stuart, King James VII. You're the seventh James Stuart to be king. Now the first six were born here in Scotland. You, however, were born in England after your granddad, James VI, like a lot of Scots, moved to London for work. Anyway, the English can never pronounce Scottish names properly, so they call you James the Second. Let me tell you what's been happening recently. Uh, you've been king for just over three years, since your brother Charles died. You're on your second marriage. Uh, your first wife died 17 years ago now, but you do have two daughters that survived from that marriage, Mary the eldest and Anne. You've also lost a lot of children in infancy. You did marry again two years after your wife's first death. Oh, there was a bit of furore about that. Not because she was 25 years younger than you, because she was Catholic. You're Catholic yourself. You converted to Catholicism 20 years ago, although... To be honest, at first, you kind of kept it secret. You're openly Catholic now, not like your brother Charles II that waited for his deathbed to convert back to the true faith. Good luck to him with that. Fear of Catholics in the kingdom has been at fever pitch. There's a crazy series of events known as the Popish Plot. Now, that's a whole story for another episode, but the bottom line is innocent people were executed in the say-so of this crazy Anglican priest. It was mental. What am I telling you for? You were there. It led to a group of exclusionists in English Parliament that even tried to make sure that you couldn't become king because of your Catholicism. They were in a proper, proper frenzy. And then some people said, calm down. James's daughters are Protestant. 
They're married to Protestants. They'll succeed him. He can't live forever. Calm down. And then there was talk of your young wife being pregnant. Oh, they went mental. The Catholics are coming. The Catholics are coming. Calm down. His wife's had children before and none of them have survived. Calm down. His existing daughters are Protestant. They're married to Protestants. Calm down. And then it turns out that she is pregnant. Oh, no, the Catholics are definitely coming. Calm down. If it's a girl, remember she's got those two older sisters. They're Protestants. They're married to Protestants. They'll succeed them. Calm down. And then a son's born. Oh, now it is time to panic. Now it is time to panic. They don't like up on Captain Mannering. The Protestant nobility might be in panic, but you have a beautiful baby boy. You've called him James. One day, he'll be James the Eighth. Now, some fake news brigade people put out a story that the baby was stillborn and you had a live baby brought in in a hot water bottle to replace the dead child and that this boy isn't in a natural fact a legitimate heir. Now, let's think about that just for a minute. They're saying that your wife gave birth, the baby was dead, somebody rushed out and went down the all-night drive through baby store, said, have you got one that looks like the king? I need one that comes with batteries. Oh, and by the way, it needs to be Catholic. Can I have friars with that? They hid the receipts, brought the baby up the back stairs unseen and swapped it for the dead baby. Okay. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but if you read it on Facebook with a picture of the lizard baby holding a crucifix, some people will avoid all sorts of logic to believe what they want to believe. The only blessing was that you'd anticipated this type of fake news, and that's why you'd invited 70 people to witness the birth. Yes, 70 people. Seven, that's more people than are going to watch this YouTube video. The wife was not happy. Even then, people said, ah, but most of those 70 folk were Catholics. We still believe the drive through baby store story. Now, when the drive through baby store story didn't hold water, that is when they acted. Within a few short months of the birth of the future James VIII, a group of parliamentarians from the House of Lords wrote to William of Orange. Right Now, he was a Dutch guy who was married to your eldest Protestant daughter, Mary. <coughs> they invited him to invade and promised them that the country would back him. Now let's just rephrase that. A group from the unelected House of Lords overthrew the government and now immigrants are running the country. Sounds kind of different when you say it like that, eh? Now James, rather than stand your ground, you flee to France. Now, that might seem overcautious to some of our listeners, but to be fair, they have chopped off the head of your dad and your great-grandmother. And somebody tried to blow up your granddad. So, better safe than sorry. Now, they call this the Glorious Revolution. It was a rebellion. Hey Lizzie, you're a fraud! I'll never get that OBE now. Now, I've got nothing against the Queen. Right, she seems like a nice old sort, and I'm not an hereditary monarchist. I'm just saying, if you are... Then when the Jacobites fought to put James back on the throne, it wasn't a rebellion. Now you might say, what's the problem with replacing the rightful heir with a foreigner that's married to one of the monarch's children? And I say, that's great. Let's get rid of the Queen and bring back Meghan Markle. I'm good with that. And she's hot. You see, nowadays... It's legally permissible for a royal heir to marry a mixed-race American divorcee. Although it seems it's not socially acceptable. But to this day, there are limits on what the law will allow. In 1701, because of all this furor, the Act of Settlement said that all future kings of England and Ireland must be Protestant. Now, in response to that, the Scots passed the Act of Security to say, we'll choose our own monarch, thank you very much. 
The English then passed the Aliens Act. Okay, now, if you want to know more about the Aliens Act, I do have a video on that. There's maybe a link up there. But that was how the English forced the Scots to negotiate a union. Of course, the 1701 Act of Settlement persists to this day. And that is why Kate Middleton is not a Catholic. I believe my work here is done. Having a dog is going to be a lamb alive. Cheerio and Rasta.